Um, I saw apparently Jupiter, which was looking somewhere up there, and when I was looking at it, there were three moons. That's all I could tell there were. Uh -huh. I'm here with Shauna Etson, and Shauna, what's your role here at the museum? I am an astronomy educator at the Air and Space Museum. Normally I work at our public observatory at the downtown location, but today we are at the Uvarhazi Center. Okay, and what was the impetus for this event? Uh, we started holding star parties here at Hazi last year, and we have a few stargazing events. We try for one per month downtown and we get great feedback, people are very excited, and we have a lot of visitors out here who would love to get to see the stars and planets and who may not realize that there is a lot that we can see from here, even though it is suburban light pollution, that there's still a lot that's visible. And as the Smithsonian, we're in a position to offer a free event with knowledgeable people like NOVAC members to show visitors how to use the telescope, what they're seeing, and how they can get more involved in astronomy. Okay, how did you find out about NOVAC? How did you connect with the club? Uh, well, I've known about NOVAC since I first uh, got this job seven years ago because several of our volunteers uh, at the Public Observatory are NOVAC members. Uh, Cal Powell has been really involved uh, from the beginning. He's helped us with meteorite training and constellation training. He's uh, been one of our star setup telescope people at our evening events, so his knowledge has been really great and we've uh, come to NOVAC events, we've spoken at meetings, we've uh, thought of NOVAC really as really important partners in DC area astronomy and astronomy outreach. That's fantastic. Well, thanks for your time here. I know you're trying to get some dinner before it gets dark. <laughs> Uh, and we got some great weather tonight, so hopefully yes, we can get we a Yes, we do. Knock on wood. But yeah. this is the kind of day you dream about for astronomy. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you. To it. I'm here with Alvin Manalo, who's the outreach coordinator for NOVAC. And uh, Alvin, how did you get involved with uh, being the outreach coordinator? Yeah, so my, my passion is really to, uh, as part of the NOVAC mission, to help others observe. And I like and try and enjoy um, getting new folks into the astronomy hobby. Uh, and introducing a concept about space science and other uh, STEM concepts to folks who've just never been exposed to astronomy or being able to look at the night sky. Uh, and this is a great um, introduction for them to look at a telescope and see what's out there and hopefully that will you know, be a gateway for them into whether it's astronomy or another uh, field in the sciences. So how did um, we get hooked up with uh, the Smithsonian here, did they reach out to to NOVAC to see if we could help? Yeah, so probably, you know, so the Smithsonian have, and other organizations reach out to us for uh, to do partnership events with them. Uh, and we, so the Smithsonian contacted us to do a star party. Uh, we got together, planned it out, and this is actually our third star party with the Upper Asia Center. So, and the last one we had about 400 visitors come, and we're looking forward to, to more today. Okay, great. How many of, the, of these events a year, not with the Smithsonian, but in general, do oh, we do? Oh, yeah, we get, we get so many, um, and that's really a good thing for Novak. I think right now, this year, we have over 55 requests wow. uh, for events, uh, and we've done about 80% you know, of them, depending, depending on the weather. Uh, and so, it's, so this year so far has been really successful as far as outreach is concerned, and we reached out to a lot of new folks all around the D.C. area. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Alvin. Thank you. Hi, I'm James. I'm with Novak, and this is my first time uh, putting this new mount of mine. It's the AZ Eco 5 uh, Dozio mount, and right now it's set up to be used in AZ mode configuration. But with this, I can quickly convert this to the EQ mode for astrophotography usage. I bought this about uh, three months ago, and it's the first time I get to uh, try it out and uh, put it to work and see how it goes. Okay, my right. name is Tom Reinert. I am from Fairfax. Um, this telescope is a recent acquisition, 
It's a six inch reflector, Newtonian reflector. It's actually a, a telescope that's designed um, for astrophotography, but I'm using it for visual observation. And what is good about it, it's got a shorter tube that I can mount on this uh, German uh, surveyor's tripod, which is very stable. And this is actually a manual mount. Um, so I've used it at some star parties and it's pretty easy to move around and people like to look at it because it's sort of got a lot of different parts sticking out and uh, that keeps their interest. So um, I've been happy with the performance. It's pretty good for dim objects, um, but also good for planets. And I've done the planets with it. So, so it's a good piece. Any idea what you're going to be looking at tonight? Uh, we'll be looking at Jupiter and Saturn, maybe the Andromeda galaxy, maybe some star clusters. I'm here with Arlen. Arlen, what's your last name? My name, last name is Rosh. Rosh, okay. I keep seeing it written down and I'm trying to figure out how it gets pronounced. And... It gets pronounced many different ways, <laughs> uh, but it's all good. Okay, so you're here tonight and you've brought uh, maybe a contender for the smallest telescope on the field. Yes, so which... this is a wonderful uh, little grab-and-go telescope. You can buy them brand new for uh, $200. They come with a finder scope, two eyepieces, the mount itself, you have to provide a table. Uh, but uh, this is a very good telescope for beginners. It uh, uh, offers uh, wide field views, uh, uh, so you get uh, rich fields uh, uh, of the Milky Way, uh, and you see objects like uh, the double cluster that is, in some telescopes is too big to actually even get into one view. This will do that very easily. You can look at Andromeda Galaxy with it, you can look at planets with it, so I'll be hopefully looking at Jupiter here soon, and then Saturn. Uh, so, uh, and I've got many other eyepieces that I'll, that I'll use with it. Uh, uh, but uh, for a beginner, because it's so easy to set up uh, and take back down, there's no electronics to really uh, get messed up with. Uh, the only thing electronic is, is the uh, power for the finder, and uh, it's very, very simple. So it's a, it's a wonderful starter scope for, uh, for a lot of people. All right. Thank you very much, Arlen. You're very welcome. Um, I actually bought it a few years ago from an astronomer in California, but it's a Celestron uh, 9 and a quarter inch um, and a go-to scope. And uh, just really been enjoying it. Got the dew shield on it. Got a few different lenses I've bought, collected over the years. But uh, I just bring it, bring it to outreach to uh, kind of share you know, the wonders of the night sky with like young people mostly, I really get a kick out of that. Um, uh, well, right now we're looking at Jupiter, but uh, pretty soon Saturn will be out. And then we'll kind of see, you know, what the night sky offers. Uh, maybe a ne little Neptune later on, maybe uh, an M31, M13. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what's available. I haven't checked it out yet. I just got off work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm here with uh, NOVAC member Jillian, who has two telescopes here tonight. And Jillian, why don't you tell us first about this larger telescope? So this is a 115 millimeter Mead refractor, uh, and I have it on um, a CEM25 mount, ioptron mount here. Um, this is probably about the largest telescope that I can put on this mount, but that's what I like because this mount is a relatively lightweight one, which makes it very portable for nights and light tonight. And also it means that um, I'm more likely to get it out. Uh, and you they will say the best telescope is the one that you, you use. use. <laughs> exactly. And you, you say you use this for astrophotography So a I lot? use it mainly for astrophotography, but uh, also for it's nice for public nights like tonight. Mm -hmm. And how long have you had it? This one I've had a bit under a year. Uh, the mount I've had a, a lot longer, but the telescope itself I've had. A okay, year. so it's a new friend. Yeah, so it's a relatively new friend, yes. Yeah, great. And how about this small little telescope? Small, this is my travel telescope. I've had this uh, somewhat longer, uh, 2016, I've had it about three years, yes. Okay. And you said we you took this to the so solar this, eclipse? Uh, so this one went out to the solar eclipse t with me. Um, I have a telescope here and uh, that's the tracking mount there and my DSLR camera all fits in a relatively small backpack that I can take on the plane with me and the rest of it, uh, the counterweight and the tripod goes in the uh, check-in baggage. What mount is that? 
So this is a Skywatcher tracking mount. So it's, a, it's really a camera a tracker. A camera tracker, okay. It's really a camera tracker, but for this size scope, so this is a 65 millimeter scope. Uh, and it only weighs about five pounds. The camera tracker will take 12 pounds. So by the time you get the scope and um, a camera, that's just about right for this kind of camera tracker. Okay. It's, I mean, it's not the most stable thing, but uh, you can get it stable. So uh, uh, it was certainly plenty for the plenty stable enough for the Eclipse. Okay. So. Thanks. Right. I'm here with Steve, and as you can see, the sun is set. And Steve actually lives in two worlds here. He is a volunteer for the Air and Space Museum, and he's also a NOVAC member. So, uh, Steve, what's what's your role here tonight? Are you just wandering around looking through telescopes, or? I'm I'm officially here as in my in my Smithsonian role, Air and Space. Okay. So I'm once the lines start picking up, I'm going to work the lines and deal with line management. And, this kind of thing. Okay. Tell people maybe what they can expect to see when they get up to the front of the line. Okay. And how long have you been uh, volunteering for the Air and Space Museum? Um, about a year. About a year. It took okay. me about six months after I retired. Ah. And how long? How about Novak? How long have you been a Novak I mean, about member? About four. About four years. Okay. So I'm still a newbie. Uh, we're all newbies. <laughs> yeah. Well, relatively speaking, <laughs> I still remember what it's like to to be learning a lot of the stuff for the first time or seeing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you going to get a chance to actually look through some telescopes tonight? Sure, I'm, I'm de I, I can't resist. All right. I'm already, you know, just helping kids line up the little um, the little daub over there. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to look and make sure the viewfinder's uh, aligned, so I have to admit I've taken my own peaks. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, thanks, Steve, and uh, sure. thanks, I'll let Linda. you get to whatever you need to do. Thanks, Linda. So what's your name? Abby Tower. And you're here from where? Dubois, Indiana. And how did you find out about our star party? Well, we're on our way to the hotel, but we are, um, like, chaperone, kind of, told us that one of them was going to get dropped off the hotel to go get the keys, so then we're just going to go see and look around at the telescopes because we're going to come here later through the week. Awesome. And, and uh, is this the first time you've seen anything through a telescope? I see. Yeah. Yeah? Actually. What did you look at? I looked at this one, Saturn, a galaxy, and I don't know over there. They didn't tell us what it was. Okay. What did you think? I like the Saturn one. Yeah? How about I am so interested in space. I'm going to be an astronaut.